So any, any last words or should I check this off? I got nothing. Okay. But uh, yeah, if you were um, Pierre Car Pierre Carl Pelado, PK Pelado, what would you do specifically? So as to make his make the Quebecor media empire even better, stronger, bigger, faster, better, like the six million dollar man. What would I do? I would do something about 24 Hours and, and the Journal Memorial. I would shut down one of them. Um, because there, there's, there's too much duplication between the two, and it's just kind of silly to have two newspapers in the same market. Um, whether that means, you know, I don't think that the Journal Memorial is going to close anytime soon if it has. He even tried his darndest. Um, I mean, he tried to close it, he tried to, tried to slash its staff, and, and he succeeded. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, uh, I could see 24 hours just disappearing and, uh, and the Journal Memorial going free. I mean, it's, it's almost free at this point. You can get it so easily that, and, you know, people hand it on, on street corners. I could see it just going completely free, for, forget about, you know, either shut down distribution or have some deal where it's, where it's distributed freely and, uh, and, you know, you gain even more readership and just focus on that instead of, you know, having having journals for 24 hours. I'm worried a bit because, for, for Quebecor's sake, because they have so few journalists at the Journal of Montreal now. Uh, the number of journalists, the number of news reporters who were locked out and came back, one. Daniel Renault. That's it. There were some sports reporters that came back. Uh, Mark Baudet, the, uh, the editorial cartoonist, came back. But it's a handful. Most of the people have either taken their, their buyouts and gone, or they've, uh, or they're going to try and make a, a run at, at Roof Front Mac, or they've moved on other stuff. Um, so there's so few journalists there that they're relying so much on the other QMI agency stuff, whether it's uh, KBA or 24 Hours or, you know, Sejul or, or whatever. And I'm worried because I imagine that he'll be going after these other outlets, like he did the Journal de Montréal and the Journal de Québec, um, and either locking them out or getting them to, 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 to see significant staff cuts, and that will reduce the amount of stuff coming out of there. And it's like, well, if you cut all of your staff across the board, what are you, who is gonna produce your content? Um, I don't know, maybe that's, Maybe that's paranoia on my part. I, I, I have a feeling that Kevin Core is still going to find content. Uh, people will still, you know, climb over each other to sell stuff to Kevin Core. Um, there's so much freelance copy in the Jordan Montreal specifically that, you know, it's still going to be there. Um, but it, it seems odd, like, especially when you compare the Jordan Montreal with the Journal, Journal de Quebec, which had a lockout but managed to keep its staff. There weren't any, there weren't significant staff cuts there when the lockout ended. Um, and you see more stuff from the Journal de Québec in the Journal de Montréal than from the Journal de Montréal. And this is after the lockout is completed. So it's just... It's like the Journal de Montréal is the younger sister to the Journal de Québec now, which is kind of silly. Um, I mean, I don't know. Pelado is, he, he's his own man. He doesn't need advice from me. I'm not, uh, not he's, he's, he, he has his vision. He has his, his media. It's, a, it's obviously very populist media. It's going after audiences, you know, um, quality of journalism is not his primary motivator. And that's, you know, he's allowed to do that. He's, he, he he, he can do what he wants. He, he runs the company. Um, I would like to see him be a little bit less micromanaging, I guess. I, I hear that from a lot of people. And you see, like, you know, he had an op-ed in, uh, in the Sun newspapers when the Conservative Party, or someone who worked for the Conservative Party, tried to feed a false story to the Sun. And I'm like, 
why is Pierre Carpelito writing this, this story? Why isn't it the news director or the news editor or the journalist who got the information? Why is it, why is it, why is it going all the way to the top? And, and the answer is that, you know, he's, he's very, he's very micromanaging. He, he, he sees himself as Quebec or he is the Quebec or brand. And, um, and I think he should sort of give a little bit more freedom to the people who work under him. Okay. Geek, if you're a geek review. For Jessica? Yeah. I would seriously look at... Um, first of all, I would end this whole ridiculousness of threatening to shut down papers. I mean, La Presse, I think, sent three reporters to Cannes for the Cannes Film Festival. If you have the budget to do that, you are not in danger of shutting down. I'm sorry. Um, I would... S I, 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 I would see about, you know, maybe cutting down on duplication. Not so much having La Presse feed the other papers, which is done quite a bit now, but, um, I don't know what else, but, um, and I would look, this is more, I think, a problem on, on Radio Canada's side, but I would take a little bit more seriously complaints, admittedly, from a lot of Quebec or columnists, but complaints about how these two organizations, La Presse and, and, and Radio Canada, work together quite a bit. You see so many La Presse columnists on Radio Canada Television and radio. Um, you have to wonder, you know? Uh, I, I don't think there's anything formal in place. There are, there are a few things that are formal. I mean, they have, they have, there's an award show that's literally La Presse Radio Canada. It's like, okay. Um, but um, just because it's Quebec or doesn't mean their criticisms, you know, are, can be dismissed. Mm -hmm. it's, um, otherwise, I mean, I have certain pet peeves. I think La Presse wastes a lot of paper. They have articles that are like this big on pages this big, and it's like, why, why do you have so much fucking white space? Put in another fucking story on that page. But whatever. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what their fin finances are like, but assuming they're profitable, I really can't criticize them very much. But La Presse is certainly doing a very good job. I might invest a bit in the in the smaller papers, um, but I, I I'm not familiar enough with them to really to really offer any advice. So, yeah, the thing I find interesting is where you you're viewing them both Quebecor and uh, Jessica as solely old school newspaper entities, and even though we've been speaking about the uh, which all worldwide with the double yeah you know, which one internet. Uh, there's sort of TV stations, because yeah, TVA is with Quebecor as well, and uh, there's La Presse TV that I'm always trying to figure out where it shows up. Is there a station that has La Presse TV? Well, it's a, um, it's a production company. Okay. So it'll sell mm -hmm. its productions to the, various, mm -hmm. uh, to the various networks. Okay. How do you can, I bet you. Uh, yeah, I think, I think they do stuff for, for some of the other ones, too. Okay. Um, online, I think, I think the big thing I would, I would do online is get away from this Cibra uh, Press portal idea. Like, La Press does not have a website. Neither does Le Soleil or, or any of the others. They're all part of this Cibra Press portal. And I, I, I think, you know, uh, Canada.com was the same, uh, the CanWest stuff. Uh, Quebecor was the same. They had their canoe portal. But I think they're, people are sort of getting away from this portal concept and saying, my, my newspaper, I want it to have a website. You know, give it a website. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'd probably rearrange quite a bit of how, how Cibra Press works um, and have more, more local voices. Um, so I think that would, be, uh, that would be my thing for them. On, on Quebec Corps' side, um, they're sort of in transition. Um, they, just, they launched recently TVANouvelle.com, which is, you know, just a redesigned website for TVA and LCN. Um, and uh, so they're, they're moving also a bit away from the, the canoe portal concept. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's still quite a bit of wire copy and there's not much, um, there's not much journalism that's being done there that you get anything interesting from online that you wouldn't get in print, you know?
Okay. Then to switch to the English side. Your overlord, Paul Biden. It's tough to comment on that because, I mean, he, is, he is my employer's employer's employer, you know? It's like... And, and feel free to say, no, I can't talk. Um, he has presented uh, publicly and privately this, this idea of a digital first strategy. He's hired some experts on digital media from the United States to sort of advise uh, his board of directors and um, so you know they're, 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 they realize that it's you know the media environment is changing they're not quite sure how it's changing but they're they're doing stuff they set up they've set up iPad apps for the various newspapers um, they've set up you know various other kinds of apps they have you know, improved websites and stuff. Um, I would like to, I mean, and in general, you know, it's not just my employer, in general for, for media, I like to see less management from the top and more from on the local side. Um, you know, it, it's, it's nice to have a national network of newspapers. It's nice to have, to, to think of it as one giant entity, but people don't, People aren't loyal to the big corporate overlord. They're loyal to their newspapers. They're loyal to things that are close to them. Um, and I mean, there's certain internal policies that you know may disagree or disagree with. But um, um, I think uh, I think Paul Godfrey has realized, sort of like um, like Jessica, that his newspapers are. I don't want to say better journalistically, but they're the more serious ones. They're the more, you know, you compare the Edmonton Journal to the Edmonton Sun. You, you know, you see a difference. And uh, so I think, I think he knows and, and other people who work for, for, for my company know that you have to protect that. And certainly the Gazette, um, I think they've succeeded a bit more than some of the other papers, is, you know, they have cut quite a bit in, in staff, you know, um, support staff. They cut, you know, call centers. They've just shut down their uh, their lobby. Uh, you know, the two people sit in the lobby and take classified ads and subscriptions and stuff. Um, they've cut everywhere, but they've tried as much as possible to protect uh, the city reporting staff, the you know, the actual journalists uh, who work for them. Um, and that, you know, I, I give full credit for that because that's that's very difficult to do. And it has resulted in cutting, you know, copy editors. Copy desk has been has been sort of massacred um, in the past five years. Um, but you know, they're still trying to protect the journalists. And and for any news organization, I would I would give the same advice: is protect those journalists. Get rid of everyone else you can, but it's, it's the journalists who will, you know, create the quality that makes people want to uh, want to read you, want to consume uh, what what you have, and if you can do anything else cheaper, then go ahead. I'm not crazy about about cutting because I think, it, you know, at this point it's it's counterproductive to cut more staff. Um, but but definitely protect those journalists. Okay. Um, 